Hi and welcome to AC Practical 10.1. Dr. Ken here with you and we're going to be having a look at power in single phase AC circuits. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at three individual circuits. But before we get started, don't forget to do your risk assessment. Um, identify your hazards, um, the kind of supervision level and the risk class high level or medium and some of the control measures you'll be putting in place to try and control or mitigate the risk that you've identified. So here's our equipment that we'll be using for our practical. I'll just change my pointer to a pen. So over here you can see we have a digital volumeter just set up to measure volts. Uh, we have a clip-on ammeter, which is going to be measuring our current. And over here we have a watt meter. The training aid itself is comprised of uh, resistors here. Back here, they're about uh, 75 ohms each. Then we have an inductor kind of sitting here, hiding behind the... Uh, multimeter and it's about 163 millihenries and finally we have a capacitor here sitting front and center at uh, 20 microfarads. Uh, each of these three devices the resistors, the inductors and the capacitors are brought out to this terminal strip and uh, you can see here our first resistor we're going to be using is connected here so that's a resistor the white wires you can see here are the white terminals here giving us our inductor and the blue wires to the capacitor come to the blue terminals giving us our capacitor so we have a resistor, we have an inductor, and we have a capacitor to play with. We can measure the current, we can measure the voltage across our device, and our watt meter allows us to measure the power in the circuit. Uh, let's just do a quick indication of how the watt meter works here between these terminals. Uh, effectively, these are in series because that is effectively a ammeter. And then down here between the V1 and the V2 two terminals is a whole heap more windings because it's a high impedance thing. And that effectively is a voltmeter. And you can see that we've got that connected in parallel. And you'll see that a bit more clearly when we look at the circuit diagram. So let's move on. So with the three main powers we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at uh, the power in a resistive circuit. And if you've uh, done the theory, um, power in a resistive circuit is the only real true power. And we use the term true power. We're going to be also looking at the power in a capacitive circuit. Capacitive circuits have reactive power. And then we're going to be looking at the power in an inductive circuit. And an inductive circuit also has reactive power. And of course, as we should realize now, the capacitive and reactive powers are at 180 degrees to each other. So one can be used to counteract the other. But for now, let's move on with our prac. And here we have our basic circuit. So let me change the pointer to the pen. Uh, as I pointed out, the um, our watt meter doesn't use M and L; it uses A1 and A2 across here, V1 and V2. So effectively, like I said, we have a ammeter connected in there, and in here we have a voltmeter. So that's what the, the watt meter is doing. Um, we've got something in the order of about 25 to 28 volts AC for our supply. Rather than put a fixed ammeter in the circuit, I've used a clip-on or clamp-on ammeter. 
So we'll be using that to uh, measure the current and we're using a digital multimeter as our voltmeter. And as I mentioned before, here's our load, our resistor at about 75 ohms. So we're simply looking at how much power is going to be dissipated by this resistor. We're going to use a watt meter to measure it and we're going to take the current and voltage readings and see if they come out similarly. So here's our actual setup. And you can see we've got about 26 volts on our voltmeter across our resistor. Here's our resistor that I pointed out before. That's a resistor in here. We're pulling about 330 milliamps of current through the resistor and our watt meter is indicating 9.4 watts. So that's the measured values. We've got uh, 9.5 watts. We've got uh, 25.9 volts and 330 milliamps. Now, before I turned the unit on, I actually calculated what we should have got. That's what the second table tells us, what the calculated power was. Um, I took the uh, V squared of the voltage and divided by R. That's just the uh, Ohm's law equation for power. And it gave me 9 watts. And you can see our two values very close together. So what I calculated would be power in the circuit is what is the power in the circuit. If you multiply the volts by the current, and again, I just calculated out the current in the circuit and the voltage I applied, and I got um, 9 volts times amps, which again is very close because in a resistive circuit, the true power and the apparent power are equal to each other. And they're equal to each other because our reactive power is zero. So if I was to draw a small uh, power triangle down here for you, here's my true power, here's my apparent power, and here's my reactive power. If that reactive part of the triangle is all the way down here and there is no reactive power, if this equals zero, then my apparent power and my true power are going to sit on top of each other at the bottom of the triangle. Therefore, they would be the same. So in this particular circuit, there is no reactive power because the volts active, the, sorry, sorry, the current reactive here is zero amps and doesn't matter what the voltage is because anything times zero is zero. So this worked out exactly right and this has to be the same because the power is the same. Um, the slight discrepancy we, discrepancy we have of about um, 0.4 of a watt is just the inaccuracy of our meters and things that we're using around the circuit. So let's move on to the next one. So our next one is power in a capacitive AC circuit. So in this little prac, again, let me just turn on my uh, pen. We've got our AC supply at 50 hertz. The watt meter hasn't changed. The ammeter is still our clip-on ammeter. But, and our voltage is still being measured with the uh, digital voltmeter, but we've changed our element, our component. So we now have a 20 microfarad capacitor in our circuit. And will we get a difference between the measured watts and the amps multiplied by the volts? So let's have a look at what we've got. So 
here we are. I'll just change to the pen again. So straight away, we've got uh, 25.89 volts. We've got about 140 milliamps, and you can see we're connected across the blue terminals this time. So we're definitely measuring the current in the capacitor. Our watt meter is indicating absolutely nothing. So there's our watts, our 25.89 volts, and our current at 140 milliamps. And I've just taken the liberty of multiplying the voltage by the current in the bottom of the table. Gives me 3.6 VA. So, in actual fact, it's 6 point VA. I should have put an R on there. It's reactive. So, true power is V squared divided by R. And there is no R. So, any voltage divided by 0 is simply going to be infinity or 0. So, there is no true power. And you'll notice that's exactly what we got. On the watt meter, the watt meter says there's no true power being dissipated in the circuit. But there is volts amps reactive. So we got 3.64. So you can see here, I'll draw the arrows in 3.64. So in this particular case, we've got 100% reactive, no true power. And our apparent power and our reactive powers, that's these two here, are equal. They're the same. So again, I'll uh, up here I'll just draw a quick power triangle. So in this particular case, we might have a power triangle that looks like this. And we've got reactive over here, reactive power. We've got apparent power. And we've got true power. But in this particular case, there is no true power. And effectively, that side of the triangle has come in against there. So our triangle would look more like two parallel lines because there's no true power in here. We've only got reactive and apparent. So that's what's happening with a circuit that's set up to measure capacitive power in this particular circuit. So again, just to go over it, there's, you can see on the display, no watts, but we do have volts and we do have amps. So there is power in the circuit, but the power is reactive power, not true power. So let's move on to our last little prac. So this is circuit set up for power in an inductive circuit. And you know this one's the same but different. So again, our uh, watt meter is going to be measuring the power. Our supply really hasn't changed. We're still going to measure the current using our clip-on ammeter. Current, I should say, using the clip-on ammeter and our voltmeter. But you'll notice that uh, our inductor and our has an internal resistance. Now, that I happen to know that the internal resistance is about um, 4 ohms. And our inductance is about 164 millihenries. So that's the circuit we have. So the reality is this is a practical inductor because we're going to need to think about the internal 4 ohms as well as the the inter oh sorry the rea reactants of this. So Let's have a look at what the power has done. So you can see here, we've got 25 volts, 
or nearly 26 in fact. We've got about 450 milliamps in the circuit. We're now connected across the inductor. You can see there the inductor, it's the white leads. That's this gadget here. And you can see on our watt meter, we're pulling a tiny, tiny little bit of power. 0 0.7 of a watt. So what have we measured? We've measured uh, 0 0.7 of a watt, 25.9 or 26 volts, 450 milliamps. And again, I've just multiplied the voltage and the current together, giving me 11.65 volts amps. And of course, that too is reactive. So the next thing I did is I actually calculated the values and I calculated the true power component with a resistance of 4 ohms internal and I just simply worked out what, that, uh, what the current was, I squared R and I got 0 0.8 watts, so very very close to what is being displayed on the meter. So that's the internal resistance of our inductor is creating that little bit of true power. I then worked out the reactive power. So the reactive power is the volts times a reactive current. Our reactive current is the 450 milliamps. Multiply that by the voltage and you get 12.7 volts amps reactive. And uh, again, if you look at these two and compare them, they're very, very close. So, you know, just over 12 compared to just under 12. So our volts amps reactive is about 12 VA reactive. So there you have it. Not much difference between the two. And of course, our apparent power and our reactive power are the same. So if I was to draw the power triangle, just to remind you again, but I'm drawing the power triangle down this direction this time because my reactive component is down here, my true component is up here, and my apparent is here, but there's only a tiny, tiny bit of true, so my triangle is going to look very much like that. So only a tiny bit of true, my reactive and my apparent are so close to being the same, it's not funny. So they're very, very, very close, very similar. So what can we learn from all of this? So to summarize, we've got first our resistive circuit. So that's the important thing, a resistive circuit, it has true power. And it also has apparent power, but apparent power is equal to the true power. And in a resistive circuit, there is no reactive power. So in a resistive circuit, you only have true power. In a capacitive circuit, we have reactive power. Our reactive power and our apparent power are equal. And there is no true power. That's because a capacitor has no internal resistance, therefore it has no true power component whatsoever. So a capacitive circuit has reactive power, VAR reactive, that reactive and apparent powers are the same and there is no true power. And then finally, our inductive circuits, they have reactive power, they have reactive and parent power which are so close to being the same we just call them the same and they often have a small amount of true power and that small amount of true power simply comes from the internal resistance of the actual inductor itself so a practical inductor has this internal resistance so we end up having just a very very small amount of true power in an inductor so I hope you've enjoyed the practical on single phase power. Again, when you do this practical in your particular context, your values that you will use are 
going to be probably a little bit different and uh, but the principles and the results we kind of got should bear the similarities to what you've seen here.